All right, welcome back, Movement Specialist, to a special edition of Triplane Function. Today we're going to be talking about shoulder mechanics, and more specifically, scapular mechanics as it relates to the ribs and the thoracic spine. A lot of times when people say, what's the, above, the joint above the shoulder? As a physical therapist, a lot of people say, oh, once you clear the shoulder, the next place to go is the neck. Is that truly the next joint proximal? to the shoulder. Well, let's talk about it. So, of the cardinal motions, by the way, this is Earl. Say, hi, Earl. All right. <clears throat> we'll talk about how the shoulder works. So, the planar motions of what we talk about, about how the shoulder typically works a lot is inflection, abduction, external, internal rotation. By and large, that's, that's what we talk about. Whenever we, whenever we look at the shoulder as it relates to the scapula here, I want to orient you to some special bones. Now, if you have a humerus, now, if you are as part of a PT clinic or another clinic, or if you're a patient, just ask your PT just to see a skeleton. They should probably have one. It's really good to get the appreciation of all the different bones of this humerus as well as the scapula. So, the shoulder glenohumeral joint, as we call it, is comprised of a ball and socket joint. When we take off the humerus, you will see this nice soft ball. Right here, here's the socket aspect. Earl has a, a nice pin drag right through here so, um, so that we can attach this in not an anatomical way. But if I were to unscrew this, you would see how um, that occurs. And actually, I can probably unscrew it. So something else that I want to point out on this bony humerus here is going to be something that's called your greater tubercle. Your greater tubercle is this bone right here. So here's that articular surface of the ball that hits with the socket and this one right here your greater tubercle and this little guy right here which is not great but is lesser than the great so that's a lesser tubercle. A lot of times when we talk about shoulder mechanics and if you're having shoulder pain you don't really need to know much about how the ball articulates with the socket you really want to know about where is this greater or lesser tubercle going as it relates to the scapula. So now let's zoom into the scapula here when you look at the scapula, here is that glenoid cavity. That's right where the um, ball articulates or meets up with the scapula. This bone up here, that's going to be more your acromion. And here's going to be your coracoid process. And this part of the shoulder blade we mostly think about is going to be this whole wing part. This is going to be your infraspinatus fossa, supraspinatus fossa here, as well as the spine of your scapula. So... If we just talk about how the bones articulate, we're not even going to talk about muscles much today. I'm going to show you how this greater and lesser tubercle can have can give issues to the shoulder by where it's positioned. You will see that whenever someone moves through their arm through flexion, so zoom out a little bit and show how the hand's moving up. Okay, and then zoom back in as the arm's moving up. This lesser tubercle right here can start to jam, can start to get closer to the sacromion. This is one reason for a shoulder impingement. Whenever the shoulder elevates, that a lot of these different rotator cuff muscles, some of these humeral depressors don't pull down enough or the scapula is too, too tight in this downward rotated position. It doesn't upwardly rotate enough to where you get the lesser tubercle jamming up against this acromion. A big muscle that's here, which we, we've done a video on before, is your supraspinatus. It lives in this cavity, comes all the way underneath the sacromion, and attaches to this greater tubercle. But as it comes up, who cares what it attaches to? It's going to be getting pinched by this lesser tubercle. That's why a lot of people that lift like to externally rotate a little bit to clear that out of the way, so they can come up all the way into full flexion. That kind of happens naturally and normally in a non-dysfunctional shoulder. But when you have shoulder dysfunction, that can be a huge root issue of impingement. Now, this greater tubercle can cause even a greater issue because the greater is bigger than the lesser. A lot of times this is seen in a painful arc or whenever you go through abduction to where this arm is coming all the way up. And you can see that if you zoom out, the hand's coming up to the side. What happens here to this greater tubercle? The greater tubercle comes up, approximates right underneath this acromion process. It can cause a lot of issues with impingement. That's why, again, people that lift up to the side, or if you're the guy that does a lot of deltoid flies, if you get, start to get some shoulder pain, there might be a bony reason why you might be getting that. That might not be the best exercise for you for that, for that point in time. And so you can see how if the humerus is not 
being depressed enough, it can run into this scapula. Now, in triplane function, we know that we always talk about the joint from one end, from the top down, as well as the joint from the bottom up. So we just went over the top-down mechanics of how the humerus can cause impingement in the shoulder. Tune in for this next video, how we talk about how the scapula, as well as the ribs and the T-spine, actually interface to still affect shoulder pain. See you soon.